last auto um, wizard that we need to look at is the auto digitizing wizard. And if you watched the other video on auto artwork wizard, that's the one that I typically use. Um, even if I'm going to turn it into embroidery stitches, I like to use the auto artwork wizard. So watch that video um, as well, because there's some things that you can do that are more unique. I just like it. And you'll see that as we go into this auto digitizing wizard here. So to access it, I need to come up to this wizard hat. I'm going to click it and go to auto digitizing wizard, which is the last one on the right. I'm going to click it and it's going to bring up the auto digitizer wizard. I'm going to select an image and I've been using this dog um, just because. So I'm going to use it again in this video and go to next. And I'm in inches here. You can see that it's showing me the height and the width. I definitely want this to be larger. For this case, I'm going to use a four inch wide and I can always reset it. I can transform this by rotating it. So if you're working with a design, you might want to flip it vertically, horizontally. Like uh, if I flip it horizontally, you can see the dogs go in the other direction. For some reason, it looks weird. So I'm going to go back. It's amazing how you can just flip something and it looks a little different to you, even though it's the same thing. Let's go ahead and hit next. And then this one is just showing me the colors that are going to be used. There's four colors. There's the white, there's the, the brown, the tan, and black. And I can go to edit image if I needed to clean something up, which I don't usually do, as you've seen in the other videos. Um, I can delete, reset colors so I can get rid of white. But I'm going to keep it here because there's a little bit of white in the eyes. So I don't want to lose that. I can always delete the background if I need to. Let's go to next. Um, I guess I should point out at this time too, when you're doing auto digitizing, you don't want something that has a bunch of colors or a bunch of gradients, you know, color blends and stuff like that. And it's not going to do well with that. Um, it's better to work with something more simplistic. So like if you were doing a search online for something you wanted to create, that's more, um, I would definitely do a search for clip art and do it for like a, a dog clip art and go through images and just, you know, download something that's kind of simplistic. I'm going to leave this tolerance the same. Um, this is just the amount of tolerance around colors that kind of butt up against each other, but I find this default to work very well. Um, fill background color area with stitches. I'm going to go ahead and click this because I don't want to lose these little dots in the eye and they might go away anyways because it might be too small, but I want to give it a chance to see if it's going to come up or not. If I don't check this box, you know, to include this white, those might not be included. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm going to hit next. And this is um, something different from the other wizards. This is something that you can minimize color changes or minimize jumps. And in this, the auto digitizing wizard is kind of has some smarts built into it. So it, it will layer things pretty well. And if there's a color that shows up multiple times, it doesn't mean that, um, it's going to put all of that color at the same time. Um, it will use a little bit of intelligence there. Lock stitches. I like to change this. I like I don't like lock stitches all the time. I like it to be around a trim and a trim. I don't, I don't like it set at, at never or really always. I like to trim when it's been about five millimeters or so. So that means if the next object is more than five millimeters away from that previous one, it will automatically do a trim. And if it does a trim, it's going to automatically lock the stitches around that trim. It's a very cool feature. So I'm going to hit finish now and it's going to take a little bit of time, not much, and it's going to auto digitize it. So let me click off of it and you can see what it's created. It didn't do a bad job because I worked with something at a, that's pretty simple. The size wasn't too small and but it does make some choices that I'm, I don't always necessarily want, but I'm a, the type of person that's going to manually digitize everything. So 
Um, the more experience of a digitizer you are, the less you would utilize tools like this. So let's go ahead and take a look here. This white, um, for instance, you can see this right here was created. I don't need that. It's going to automatically select the next thing in white, and I don't need this white piece either. And then it's showing me this one, so I can just delete that. I do want to keep that one. That's the eyeball. I don't need this one. It's kind of, that was the background. I do want to keep that one. And then I can get rid of this one. So um, by doing that, it allowed me to keep those white in the eyeballs. Now, when I look at the sequencing right away, I definitely want that white to stitch out last. So I'm going to click and drag it down to the bottom. And now you can see that it shows up on top of the black. To me, that looks better. These are some of the things that you have to do when you auto digitize. Let me go ahead and take it off 3D view. And I'm going to zoom into an area here. The one thing that the software does do is it does overlap um, a little bit. Now it's not as much as I would typically overlap, um, but you can see, and go to millimeters on the ruler, you can see that the overlap is about 0.7 millimeters. And so it's going to help prevent gapping a little bit. Um, but honestly, I would, I would want it to have at least a millimeter of overlap between objects that butt up against each other. So that's something I would definitely change. And the way that I'd maybe do it is just selecting this piece right here and just coming over to push compensation. And you can see that it's doing 0.4. I might just come in here and say, I want this to be about 0.6. Because if I do 0.6 on this one, and if this one already has 0.4, that means it's going to give one millimeter. 0.6 plus 0.4 is 1. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. And you can see if I select this one, it does go around these areas, but it doesn't account for this here. So I might want to select the black, um, and I might want to do just that one eyeball, and I would maybe add a little bit more, or better yet, I would just select this piece, zoom in, and I would maybe just make bring this in a little bit to give it a little bit more overlapping for when the black takes place. You can see kind of what I'm doing here. It's not complicated, but when I right click, you'll see that that now becomes more overlap when the black goes over the top of it. Just some things that um, you might need to do if you see any gapping when you stitch out a design that you've auto digitized. So the other things, um, I would definitely do it in a little bit different of an order. Um, but for the most part, it does a pretty good job. Um, if you don't do something too complicated, too small or too detailed, um, for me, I like to convert it to artwork first, like I said at the beginning, and then I like to choose what type of stitch I want it to be. Um, now I can come in here and edit any of these pieces. This is a fill stitch. I can hit the edit button and I can change the direction of the stitches if I click on that bar there. And I can change the properties, everything that you can do as if you created it yourself. Um, I just find auto digitizing um, over the years, I did a lot of it um, in the beginning, and you end up editing a lot. And sometimes it takes a lot longer to edit a design than it does to actually digitize a design. So if you use like an auto digitize and then you go back and you're trying to clean everything up and make it look the way you want it, a lot of times if you just learn how to digitize and create the shapes, create the stitch types and do it yourself, a lot of times you can do it faster. And um, it might not seem like it to many of you, but you really can. And you get it how you want it and you get it using the properties that you need to use and all of those things. So just something to keep in mind. But that is the auto digitizing wizard. 
Again, um, I do recommend looking at the auto artwork wizard video and converting it to artwork first or bringing it in as artwork and then just selecting and converting it to the type of stitch you want. Um, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now I can, you know, convert this right over to artwork. You know, you can do that, but um, just watch that one just shows you how to clean up edges and stuff like that. But that's the auto digitizing wizard and um, you can utilize it to have the software automatically digitize designs for you. <laughs>